Alone. This is going to be the part two of um, Black Hebrews still in bondage in Kemet or Egypt. And we're speaking of this spiritual Egypt, but the key, right, the key is really in the ancient Egypt. This is why the whole um, Kemet on trial, or we call it actually Kemet on mistrial. Right, this right here, this Kemet on mistrial is so very significant. So let's go forward. We were actually at that Haaretz page that I think Shaka Amose in a sit down on a couch at um, House of Consciousness at Sarnetta's house had pointed out. Then um, Sarnetta was, you know, he was making just a critique that, you know, a lot of people say all these like white scholars, a white man is devil. If this is what we be saying on one level, then how come he's referencing all of these ones and ones and that they would even if they found, you know, um, big nose, big lip, or whatever stereotypical image that will prove to you nappy head that the that the Israelites or uh, the Hebrews or black people and they were in Egypt and it's a tie, you know, it was written in, in Hebrew or written in, in, in some real simple um metu nature saying, Hi, I'm a Hebrew, I'm an Israelite, and I was in Egypt and this is the time and everything like that. Do you think they would bring it out? Do you think that they would bring it out? You see, that's that's all we have to say, right? Do you think that they would bring it out? I mean, we already see the art and the fact and the historical document, even Tacitus, the Roman historian, circa 70 AD, saying that the Jews, right, or the Yehudi, the Ayudi, right, the Ayudi or the Yehudi, right, were of the race or the Zer, the seed of the Ethiopians, and Ethiopia is the missing link, is the root, is the key on both sides of this um, pseudo, right, this pseudo argument, this pseudo debate, right? Isaiah chapter 19 and 20 should settle that, but that's because they fulfill Isaiah chapter 20 and 5. And Isaiah chapter 20 and 5 says, and they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation and of Egypt, their glory. Now people say, oh, it's speaking about, and they're going to try to twist it as they try to twist Amos 9 and 7. They try to twist uh, Zephaniah 3, um, 9 and 10. And they try to twist um, Psalm um, 87. And they try to twist everything. And this is what even the Bible testifies to these sort of pharisaically minded um, Hebrew Israelites and pseudo black Hebrews, but they are still in bondage. Now, in the previous vid, in the previous uh, VLEC or video lecture, we decided to call it a VLEC instead of a VLOG. And so hopefully, you know, co um, cooperate with I and I brothers and sisters to see, you know, to get this kind of, you know, this this um, genre. Because a video lecture, that's what it is, a video lecture. And you might also have a video lecture to agree or to disagree or point out facts, art and facts and evidence, you know, on your own as well. And this is what we need to do. We need to use this opportunity that we have. This is a this is a prophetic time. Daniel shows that. But this is a prophetic time. But, uh, you know, uh, see, I don't want to spook you out because we already have had um, almost 400 plus years of spookism. So this reality is hard to um, digest all at once, right? Admittedly, we, we can admit from our own growth, right? We also have been growing in grace and in the knowledge of Adonenu Yeshua HaMushia, of I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the glory of I and I, God, Father, the King of Kings, Kedemawi, Hala Selassie, upon the throne of David. This is the reality, you see, this is, we talk about the tribe of Judah, the conquering line, the tribe of Judah. We talk about reality. You can say it's not that way and he was not this. And you can, you can say that all you want. But then when you are pressed to bring forward your facts and information and even to put so-called Kemet on trial, what happens? Right? What happens becomes a mistrial. That's what's going on. And even you contradict what you say you believe because all the um, unequal yokeness that's going on. Some people on the Hebrew team were antichrist and some people were for Christ. Some people were Old Testament. Some people, and, and then even the star David. 
I mean, that's somebody say it's a small point, but no, it's not a small point, right? It's not a small point, right? And therefore, we have to defer to some of the points that uh, Brother Polite did bring forward because they are valid points. It, it bluntly in terms of right and exact, true or false, so forth and so on. And we, and they didn't even touch on the Ethiopia point. So that's what we said even from before. Listen, when one's the one says who win, you know, um, who do you think is going to win? Some people say both were going to, um, lose, right? Um, and I would say so, but I would say that we all have won on another level of it. We all did win. You see, you have to get out of that winning and losing kind of a mentality, right? Because it betrays what you say this was really about, right? So you're still in that nigga shit, right? You're still in that nigga shit, right? So this means that there is more growth to be done. But the key is not just the more intellect. You all think that it's the intellect, right? The intellect, or even the so-called culture that's going to bring out a, a certain level of um a certain level of moral rightness, right? A certain level of hey, let me touch on this right here. Let me touch on this right here. Let me touch on this right here. John the Baptist, and I'm gonna use a metaphysical Bible dictionary, and you got to check out that VLEC on Marcus Garvey and John the Baptist. A lot of ones will dismiss it. That's all right. They can dismiss it all they want, right? We're going to put in that work for the King of Kings in Christ's name. We're going to put in that work right there. First of all, culture does not make people honest or bring out their natural virtues. You know what I mean? The inner soul consciousness, we're speaking about consciousness, so-called black consciousness, will let light shine in the darkness. The Ethiopian light has shined in the both the comedic, and the so-called Hebraic, black Hebraic consciousness, right? But they don't perceive it. They don't receive it. The light has shined in the darkness, right? The Ethiopian light is shining in the darkness, right? In the ignorance, but the ignorance, the ignorant niggas don't, 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 don't want to get it because it's going to take them off of this game. They already found a new hustle. Right. And we're not speaking about this. If one sells something or, you know, they put on something, they make some money or they have to, they have to pay people. And, you know, all that's just a part of, of, of liberty. That's part of life right there. We're not we're not speaking on that um natural fleshy level. Right. We're not speaking on that level. We're speaking in terms of real so-called consciousness, because, OK, you become conscious. Right. You become conscious that you are black. Okay. I mean, you were, wasn't you conscious that you was black before? You wasn't? You didn't know you were black or you start to know certain, um, intellectual things, right? Certain intellectual things. You have to recognize that the intellectual man, right? You know, man has to pass through the intellectual state of consciousness, but you're getting stuck in that intellectual state of consciousness. And that is where the so-called spiritual Egypt, right? You know, that's where the bondage, right? The bondage. I was mentioning before the difference between the, um, what happened to, um, us in this spiritual Egypt is that we came into this spiritual Egypt as captives. There's a big difference in that Egypt or Mitzrayim. We didn't go in there as captives. So I, I liken what bondage really is, is the, is where we're at right now. Well, we don't have, um, chains on our hand and feet. They're not overt, but they're on our heart and our mind. These chains are on our heart and our mind. So they took the chains off our hands and our feet because when we saw that, being natural people, you know what I mean? Having that, you know, that so-called left eye, <laughs> so, so to speak, right? We were able to resist that. 
you know, we was able to, because it was overt, it was obvious. That's why many of us would say we prefer, you know, if a racist just says some so-called nigga shit to us, you know, we prefer if they just be overtly racist because they be overtly racist. That would give us excuse. How many times have you heard a nigga say, just give me a reason, just give me a reason, just give me a reason. Come on. you, you And when you listen to them, they are giving themselves all the reasons. What more reason do you need? <laughs> But there is something bonding them, binding them. They are bound, right? They are bound. I mean, hearing one saying that they want to, they want to have an appeal. Well, well, who's the judge? The people are the judge. Who's setting up court? We already see that these Hebrews, because they were unequally yoked, even among themselves, and there are strong points. There were some points that we have to give the individuals that presented certain things overall, but uh, recognizing what this is about is about what Kemet on trial. All right. That's why, you know, we told the Havarim, you know, I and I brothers, we said, listen, you know, I mean, really look at what's going on. Like Kemet, which is, uh, Egypt, so called, or Mitzrayim, Gubit, right? Has already been on trial, has already been tried, has already been, um, judged, has already been sentenced, and the sentence has already been executed. That's what Isaiah chapter 20 is speaking about, chapter 19 and 20. This is why it says Egypt is my people. This is why you see that the, that the Ethiopians and the Egyptians, as well as if you keep reading in Isaiah and the Israelites all end up in captivity, right? Isn't this interesting? Israel is his people. He says Egypt is his people, but they all now end up, right, in captivity together. I wonder what they have in these sort of discussions. Mm hmm. No doubt they were. This is what we can, we can find traces of these ancient cultures. You know, I mean, not even just cultures, but we can find traces of what has been, you know, exclusively identified to be the proprietary of one people. You know, like the ancients ran some ancient form of copyright, right? When they all came from one as Barana Selassie, that's Bob Marley. Bob Marley says in the interview, you know, the Ham, Shem, and Japheth thing, but they forget about the father. Who is the father? The father was Noch. So even from that perspective, ones should be, if they are rightly interpreting the word, right? If they are rightly, that's what it is. It doesn't say read to show yourself approved. It says to study to show thyself approved. You see, you're reading and reading and read the word and read the word and then you're just making up stuff. And then when you're confronted on making up this stuff, you become offended and then become like false prophets and pronosticators and soothsayers. The very things that the scriptures condemn, right? And false accusers and bearing false witness, right? And thinking, well, this is your way of um, proving that the other side is wrong. You're supposed to become with the higher, not the lower. Mm -hmm. But you can only come with what you got. Right? So we don't really expect more from this um so-called Kemet on trial. We didn't expect more. Why don't we expect more? Because we've been following what's been going on, so forth and so on. But we were pleasantly surprised by certain things. And hopefully we'll comment on that as we move forward. But let's just touch on this. Just make the part two of, of, of Black Hebrews, right? Because that's what it says, Black Hebrews, right? The first words, right, spoken to the people that were in that, quote, bondage, Right. In the bondage in um, the land of Ham. Right. The land of Ham. And oh, man, it's so interesting. But Ham means um, also ignorant. One who does not know the name of God. Ham. Ones who are ignorant of the mysteries. I mean, from Kemet, the Metuneta, right? It, it means ones who don't know the mysteries. We're going to bring out those, the, the evidence, and bring that further forward in the VLEC, right? Whether this VLEC or a VLEC to follow. Because we're going to try to give things their particular name and touch on topical matter and subject matters. You know how we like to do, because it's all connected. But you start connecting it all, and people are in their little compartmentalized ways of thinking. You know, they, they compart, well, this is Kemet and that is Hebrew. This is the Bible and this is the pyramid text. You know, that, that's that COINTELPRO as we've been talking about, right? That's that divide and conquer, 
right? You're listening to the serpent speak, you know, that, that instinctual, right? Or getting caught up on your limbic mind, right? Because the mind is a trinity, right? There's three brains and not the higher brain because you're still on a lower level of consciousness. Because even though you're in the now valley, right? You know, you're forgetting about the now mountain culture, right? The now mountain culture, the now mountain consciousness, from which the Nile Valley civilization, Nile Valley consciousness, um, we can say emanated or came out from, which is, as we said, the root of both the Hebrew or the so-called Hebraic, right, as well as the Kemetic. So let's touch on consciousness for a moment, because this is where, you know, this is where the bondage, right, this is where the bondage really is. Right. It's in your mind. They took the chains off of your hands and feet. Right. And they put it on your brain. Right. So you hear many people talking about slavery in Egypt, regurgitating white supremacist, uh, pseudo Jew, right. Um, rhetoric. Right. And then ones would point to certain documents written by them as we were touching on in the, um, previous, uh, vid. Right. In the previous vid. Let's get the word myth right here for a moment myth and etymology we want to get the word myth and etymology of uh, myth because people hear that word and they don't even know what the word mean and they're going they, they are going off on the ignorance so even though the light might shine right in the darkness right uh, they don't comprehend so let's go right here myth Right. You see it right up there at the top myth. Right. Because in following up on this Haaretz, right, this Haaretz um, article right here. Right. Which um, acts or posits the question, um, were Jews ever really slaves in Egypt? Well, there's um, two major things wrong with that. The two first major things is the word Jews. And slaves. Now getting more into detail here, what we would do is circle the word like a red circle around the word Jews, right? Question mark. Show us the evidence, right? In the book of Exodus. See, these are, we should be really having these debates in a sense, even though the, the Europeans are not going to really consent to that. You understand? But, but putting forward the debate, debating what they're putting out here instead of just swallowing it down lock, stock and barrel as, um, Shaka Amose does nauseatingly, right? That's just nauseatingly. Though we agree with some of the points he's making, when he gets into that point, I think that is really the, I think that's the rock bottom. You know, that's, the, that's the real offense right there. It reminds me of the, the Pharaoh of the Exodus. You know, who kept kind of prevaricating, you know, going back and forth, right? You know, like he was double minded. That's what's interesting about that mythos, right? But these are the two words right there. Jews does not appear one time in the book of, of, of Exodus besides, um, jewelry. I mean, if you want to include that, right? The term slaves gets confounded with the connotation. Right. The etymology that is in the Hebrew Bible and that gets translated is somewhat within the King James Version is um, bondmen. Right. Or bondage. Right. Which is a more correct term. Or we can say servants. Right. From servants to bondage. Right. The difference between the um, the state of the lost sheep today Right in the Egypt of the West and the Hebrews and Israelites and mixed multitudes. Let's include a lot of you Chemites and the rest of y'all who are black or your niggas and so forth and so on. But you do want to be on the Chemite thing. Great. Good. You know, so be it. Right. This is why the Torah says thou shalt not abhor uh, Egyptian because we were strangers or Edom, or Edomite because he was our brother. And many of you Hebrew Israelites, black Hebrews, talking about the law, statutes and commandments. And yet you put Kemet on mistrial. Right. And you don't represent the major accusation from the scripture. If they went into the scripture and into the prophets, they would have made a better case both against Kemet and against the individuals that were bringing forward. Right. Um, the the um, the, the the false dissemination. 
right? Um, the false, the, the dissimulation is the word that one is to bring forward. The dissimulation. So Jews is a false term and slaves is a false term. And you'll notice that every time a so-called um, Pecklewood Jew, you know, a European Jew, every time they put anything forward, they always use these key terms, Jew and Jewish and slaves, Right? They always use these terms and then they have spread this rumor that it was the, um, it was the Hebrews or the Jews, they say, that built the pyramids. No, the truth is, if you really want to know the truth, that the Hebrews were there, they were black people, and what they did is that we repaired many monuments. Right. We repaired. Right. It was a public works project to repair a lot of these things because it was not built right, by Khufu or Khufu or whoever you want to say. It was not the pyramid was not built by Khufu. You understand? That's been proven. Right. It's just that the Western Gentile has invested too much in that lie because that's part of the lie that upholds what you all call white supremacy. Right. So they say, where's the real proof? Archaeological evidence, states, records and primary sources. You know why they ask that question right there? Because they got it hidden probably under Tel Aviv or Hebrew University, just like they stole from the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, the so-called tribe of Dan, the Negev Dan. They stole hundreds, if not thousands of manuscripts from the Beit Israel, right, of so-called Ethiopian Jews. Ask them, it's a fact. This is a documented, recorded fact. So when Josh Mintz, right, of the Jewish World Blogger, March 26, 2012, at 8, 11 p.m., puts forward this particular article and someone like Shaka Zulu, Ah, Mose want to put this forward and say, see, even they know. What? That's what kind of nigga you are? A Kemetic nigga? You might object to the word and all of that because you want to play some sophistry. You understand? <laughs> Where's the real proof? Right? How long were they trying to say while well, you're looking at the brown black people that the that the Kemites or the Mitzrayimoch or the Egyptians were not black? How long they wanted to say that to us or that Egypt wasn't in Africa and the evidence was right there and they say, no, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not. They say, no, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not. How long have ones like the scholars like Dr. Ben and 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 um John Henry Clark and Sheikh Anta Diop and so many others of our people known and unknown were were on that front lines presenting voluminous um documentation right and and and, and it was all ignored right until many of us as this generation started to pick up on it right and and to really bang on that in so many different ways especially in the 80s coming up from the 80s and everything like that and sleeka I, I wanted to get the um the ethiopia ewf for origins and destiny um early line of june 1992 where we had Cass green at bc brooklyn college come up i wanted to put that out and i haven't um edited the audio and i, I want my window mulch i have to speak to one of my brothers do do a little art for that particular vid and everything like that and hopefully um new light i'll get some opportunity to speak with uh i'm just talking about you brother wendem lidge zawadi you know, and um, also I and I, brother, um, um, Aaron, right, Wyndham, Aaron as well. Also, I'm speaking about all of my brothers, you know, Yifti, Yasun, right, um, Mikael, Ra'ah, Woda, Mikael, um, Ras, Mario, our sister, Emmanuel, um, did I, uh, Baruku, uh, Basalom, um, Benaya, Obia, all of the Wendemoch, and so many more. Yehrehmiel, Yilva, is what I'm saying, and, um, so anyway, I just thought about that because I'm thinking about what, what the brother from the Ethiopian Tawahido church, right? That was, um, 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 you could say a disciple or a student of Archbishop Yisahak, right? Who was sent from the true church, right? But you never hear any of them speaking about that. But anyway, 
once again, concerning the Jews, right? So-called being slaves in Egypt, right? So before we even get into this article, we can already see, right, you know, and read, and we can discern, you know, that old game. I mean, I mean, this is a really very clever game and this goes over most of their heads because they are still in an intellectual bondage, right? Then in intellectual bondage. You see the intellectual man, he beholds the evils of civilization. He condemns them and he advocates the punishment of the evildoers. Now that remedy leads to resistance and failure, right? This is evidence in the execution of John, right? Talk about John the Baptist, right? Um, by Herod, who was a sinner. Now, why is this? It's because man has to pass through the intellectual state of consciousness, which is the natural man, right? So ones are still caught up, right, on the natural man. This is why that subject matter of homosexuality, which at, now I'm not going to say at best, but, you know, which, um, um, in the, in the most was a nominal issue. Right. Or, or, or it was a it was not the main issue of what was going on. And and I, I come to find that they don't even understand what the real situation was. So when somebody comes along and say that it was a myth, you know, they start to fawn on themselves and fornicate. Right. With these known enemies of our people. Right. I'm not saying each individual, but it's this mindset because you might meet a friendly, nice cracker or so-called um, cracker Jew. You understand? I'm talking about those that don't want to speak the truth and just come out with the truth and so-called call a spade a spade. Right. So the obvious they lie about. So then they ask, where's the real proof? The archaeological evidence, the state records and primary um, sources, they are responding. They are watching us. They're watching these videos. Like I say, it's not about the thousands of people, right? You know, that some of y'all may get thousands. They may watch your videos, too, to a certain extent, or all of it. They probably copy it and maybe look at it. Who knows what they do with it? You understand? But I can tell by what they put out. Right. That they didn't get this from what you're talking about. Right. When they put out something so-called new, like when they ask, or oh, is Passover a myth? Right. Um, since when were the Jews? But you have to remember the Jews, too, are not all the same. That's another issue right there as well. Right. That's another issue. We tend to look at people monolithically. We tend to look at ourselves as black people monolithically. If we look at the scriptures properly. Right. We shouldn't see this so-called monolithic view. Right. But this is what we have received from the regurgitation of white supremacy. And this is because, as um Isaiah 20 says, they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, the expectation and Egypt, their glory. Mm hmm. Now, let's get to that word myth. Let's get to that word myth, right? Let's get to that word myth. 